BarnsyShowersMart.com. Trusted by bowlers around the world since 2004. By Lightning Strikes Bowl, home of Bowlers Mart Pro Shop. By Platinum Ford, drive the difference. By Fire Lake Bowling Center, 24 state-of-the-art lanes. By True Grit Coatings, drive on our passion. By Road to Grip, king of them all. By 900 Global, striking worldwide. Good morning and welcome back to the regular edition of the Beef and Barnsey Show. A, uh, back to a regular Tuesday, Thursday this week. And I am, Barnsey, as usual, I am joined by the unimitable Beef Stew. How are you? Good. How are you, Chris? I am dandy. Fresh how off a big cash your... off the schneid. Oh, Jesus. He's still going. How was your, uh, your experience at the Southwest? Uh, it's similar to previous years, the scores are super high and, uh, you better bring your strike and choose. Uh, it is no joke there. They, that, that, uh, Bolero has still, uh, retained the, uh, the house shot from previous years. Uh, we got off to a pretty good start in team event 1334. Um, and, uh, and that's with Brent Bowers, the the ex House Pro King, shooting 240, and being low man. Uh, but we did not parlay that into a monster score of 3690, which is I, it's monstrous to me. But uh, I I'm old, and so uh, that is barely a winning qualifier. We we ended up leading, but later on in the same squad, somebody stoned eight in the tenth to not pass us. So <laughs> it's a uh, yeah, yeah. The scores are uh, the scores are, are still uh, what they are there. So, um. uh, thanks, Scooby. I imagine you're talking about the one on the Storm Channel. Yeah, um, that was nice editing by Chayton and the boys to uh, make me sound like I knew what I was talking about. So, um, really appreciate that. Thanks. It actually came out to be quite an interesting video uh, talking about um, a couple of different layouts on the TNTs and shorter pin buffers and stuff. So if you get a chance, head over to the Storm channel, check that one out. Um, like I say, it's not necessarily about the TNT. It's more about how you look at layouts and stuff. So check that out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you did. Nice job. Um, I actually... Um, I actually did spare the 710 in the first game of the, of the uh, morning. <laughs> But, you know, if it didn't happen on TV, did it really happen? <laughs> um, but I absolutely smoked it. So that one that you see that I put up on my uh, on my feed that um, on Instagram, where I miss it, that one was going slow in comparison to one that's bad. <laughs> Honestly, it was amazing. Like, the 710 was getting spared. Like, I wish every place in the country could be like that because it's amazing. Like you leave the seven ten, it's like a fifty fifty. You're gonna make it. Yes, um, I was bowling next to Oscu and and uh, uh, Ryan Nadori actually made it in the PTQ as well. Uh, he threw it one handed, kind of two fingers like like Oscu does, not quite as firm as he, did, mm -hmm. and smoked it. Both pins ended up at the front rake. It, it, I just had him film every time Oscu left a split because you knew it was going down there with some pace. You had some cool pins bouncing around out there. Yeah. I mean, like I say, I, uh, I, I, I put the seven pin in the right gutter. <laughs> oh, that was, that, that, that was pretty nice. There just hasn't really been a uh, particular, there hasn't really been a particularly good time to use it, to be honest. Um, yeah, the comment is so so seems like people hate the revenant, and I don't think that's actually the case at all. Uh, tour wise, we haven't been able to throw it a lot yet, and uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the one week that we would have been able to use it really pattern wise that made sense was Shawnee, but the lanes play so slick in Shawnee that you never really yeah. got into that. Um, that was about the only time that I would have, yeah, that it. was in basically any of the places we're going to bowl in for the rest of the year. There's a good chance it would have seen daylight. Um, but yeah. uh, uh happy birthday question for both of you did the D dna come into play during last week's competition uh, i you. threw a little bit yeah i drilled a lower pin one actually uh part of what we're going to see here is the one i drilled uh for there uh a little strong for the house shot but eh, surprisingly it turned out all right 
Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where it would have fit. Uh, the tricky balance there is, is the early hook versus all the down lane oil in both Shawnee and Wichita. You have fairly new surfaces, but they still, they have enough play that the front hooks a little bit. And, uh, and so trying to get it through the front and still have enough ball behind it to, uh, to get it to pick up was, was pretty key. All right, guys. Yeah, just to remember uh, a reminder, um, we're gonna we're, we've got a video of DNA and uh, IQ Ruby coming up. Um, if you have any questions, um, super chats are open, so go that route. I think today, um, all the guys who participate in super chats or super stickers, I will put you in a drawing, and um, I'll give away a Beef and Barnsley shirt. So. Um, just any super chats, let us know. And, uh, yeah, we'll have a drawing for a beef and Barnsley shirt and, uh, we'll reveal it on Thursday's show. <laughs> so. Well, there's some truth to this for all the people that hate a ball. That ball is the nuts for someone, at least one person, but, uh, yeah. 100%. yeah right. Uh, thoughts on DNA versus gem for national is ball up from Nova. Well, Nova is pretty early already. I'm not sure that either one of them is particularly way stronger than Nova. I think both of them hook a little more down lane than Nova. Yeah, I mean, I think you've got to separate them with surface. Um, yeah. For me, the Nova looks a little bit better when it's a little bit uh, less than the box finish. So sometimes polish, sometimes lane shine. Um, for me, I see the Nova as more down lane than Chris does, but Chris sees the gem as more down lane than I do. For me, the gem is... <laughs> way smoother down the lane than the nova right i don't particularly love either of those balls um uh yeah given denny hello from oklahoma love my revenue after chris just to take the cover off and then polish it uh that, that has been an early on beef and bargy special a uh, thousand and uh either step two or uh react to shine uh, or just uh, kind of dust it off with 2,000 and, uh, and see how it plays. So, um, uh, I mean, a bunch. Um, usually like a four-inch pin, somewhere around that age. Um, and then I'd been doing like shorter buffers, but I just started changing. So I was doing a four-inch pin, a two-inch buffer, but just recently I drilled one, a three-and-a-half-inch pin and a three-and-a-half-inch buffer that seems okay, but... Um, yeah. Mm. Um, it depends how much speed she's got. Um, is she fairly matched with her rev rate and her speed? If she is, I would think that like probably, um, oh, let me think about this. Probably like four and three quarters. Do a four and three quarter inch pin, a four and a half inch mass bias and probably a three inch buffer is probably a pretty much a medium sort of layout. If she's a little bit um, slow with the speed, you could probably go to like a five and a quarter. Um, well, thank you, Pete. Yo, appreciate you coming in. I've got to know what, what that is. BGN. Is that Bulgarian? I have no idea. Let me know. <laughs> where, 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 where are you based? Um, that's the first BGN I've ever seen. I don't know what that oh. is. Uh, not your ball is be Yeah, this happens a lot, actually, where there are some really good balls in the line, but the philosophies and what's going on tour that they just don't really come into play that much. Uh, Jeremy really likes the explanation and layouts of the pin buffer on the TNT video. Again, uh, head over to that Storm channel if you want to see it a little more in-depth of layouts and how that all works. Uh, Doc, would love to hear the play-by-play -play on the Barnes-Tang match than in a tie. Um, I don't think either one was particularly loud. I wasn't particularly happy with my own performance during that match. Uh, was that the position round game? No, 244-244. It was like game three of the second round. Okay. The, the afternoon round. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and it was a moment of weakness for me, uh, how my reaction to, to winning versus losing up with a relatively good score. A good score where I've made a couple of bad shots and should could have been better, and then I – I chose to uh, do something else the next game and went back to sh averaging 2-0 again or 190. 
So Bulgarian is the answer. So All right. hey in Bulgaria, Welcome. what's going on? Yeah. Nice to see you. Let's go. Um uh yeah. Uh, yeah, someone just asked me. Um absolutely not. No, it's gonna be a replacement for the uh emerald. Um yeah, I, I don't know whether Chris threw any against the Emerald. Did, uh, yeah. So, should we start with the TNT or should we start with the Emerald? What do you want? Do you want happiness? DNA, or, 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 or do you want indifference? <laughs> DNA or uh, or oh DNA? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna say, wow, we're 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 adding we're adding balls to the show everywhere today. Uh, yeah. Let's start with the DNA. Sure. All right. Uh, I'll start with you. That's uh no, that's not the okay. DNA. Good no. good good start. <laughs> there we go. All right. So you bowling at Louisville, yep. kind of the older surface. Yeah, there's a little more friction to the right than there has been in the past. Uh I'm pretty pretty beat up after uh at last week. So getting to the right quick is oh my gosh. Well, there's a puddle. Give them that. But uh, this is a low, a, a low four and a half inch pin. Uh, has a thousand on it. Normally something that's way too much for this place. And so I was surprised at how much it it uh, stayed rounded off and was able to go through them uh, reasonably well. I mean, I certainly wasn't expecting to run the eight pin over with a ball in, in this place. But uh, a place I normally can't throw a lot of, a lot of really early balls. And you can see as it as the game goes on, it kind of keeps it feels like it keeps going longer and longer. And and uh, I didn't get it far enough right now. Like I say, most time in the middle of the game, I get slower and kind of go faster. But since I had the front, whatever, I kept going. There was five left, and uh, threw it slower. And it actually still it still continued through, uh, which is surprised. This is five right of where I was before. All right, we got a little. There you go. Yeah, that's. That's the role. Didn't get shot. every single shot. I don't think. You what? I'm not sure. I got. I think that was the one you finally missed. Yeah, that's uh, the first one in the tenth there. So I had the front nine. There's like five left, and threw it slower, and got it to the spot, and it rounded off of it. And so, uh, uh, to be honest, you know, in this place historically, when I throw big balls, they don't look very good for me there. Uh, so I was surprised that it uh, that, that it ended up being. It retained its shape, which is normally pretty good news uh, for the masses. Uh, that uh, it has more styles that you're able to use it for them when it when it continues like that. I'm not sure if that's what you saw with yours. Um, um mine. I, I'm bowling on a much newer surface than you are. Um, yeah. So this was totally fresh. The house shot there is, I think, a little tighter as well. It's like 42 feet. So um, historically, it's better to stay a little straighter, closer to the friction. Um, for me, this ball is um, a little bit hard to judge exactly what it's doing because I feel like it's so strong in the front part of the lane that it... It, it kind of just it, it really burns up quite a bit for me um, in the front part of the lane. So I could imagine someone who is a little bit uh, lower rev rate would enjoy this one. For me, I get a lot of the similar similar sort of things out of this that I get out of the gem, and I watch other people use the gem and do significantly better with it. Uh, I don't know whether it's a combination of just the super low RG that's in this ball. Um, or just how strong the cover is, but for me, it's 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 another control ball. Um, I I I would put it kind of in, in the same realm as the gem for me. Um, I know that some guys are seeing it like you were saying, like a little bit weaker. But for me, if it in, in my mind of what I consider to be weaker, um, if I was seeing it as weaker, I'd be able to hook it more than I can um, when I move left. Uh, but when I move left with this ball, it's kind of slow. So in my mind, I see that as just being like a much stronger piece. Um, but that's kind of the the deal for me. Um, 
I, yeah. I, I, I like I said, speakers probably not. I, I just think it's in the me for me so far. It feels like it might be in the medium range, and that's only based because that core is gigantic. Yeah, and like I say, I think this is very so, much um, a conversation about how um, you uh, how you put balls into certain categories. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't necessarily look at how much one hooks from one shot to the next as to which category it's in. Like for me, I know some guys do. I'm not saying that's 100% what you're doing. I'm just saying that <clears throat> I know some guys consider balls not necessarily how early they pick up. Uh -huh. and I think that um, you'd been fighting for so long to get the ball through the front part of the lane that I think that now your role's kind of <laughs> changed a little bit because we're all products of our environment. Yeah. And 100%. I, I think that now your track's a little lower and you'd like, you, you, you're you able to shape the bigger balls more than I am. So, which is odd. Yes. It's been the opposite of how it's been in the past. Yeah. Sure. And I think that with some of the weaker balls, you're again, I think it's, it, it's kind of weird. I think that <laughs> in the middle balls, like I can hook a phase two miles. Uh huh. Whereas, like Chris, it's like your super strong balls and your super weak balls hook more for you than they do for me. But the ones in the middle, I I, I don't think you have as much separation between them as I do. So it's it, it, it's yeah. kind of a little bit strange. Um, but like I well, say, for me, this and, that, this, this and that's a, why we both do reviews because hey, if you if you look at reviews and go, wow, you know, stew through that. Uh, uh, infinite physics, and it was well. That's not a fair one because we both like that one a lot. Yeah, but, uh, we have a couple of balls where you're like, I liked one, you didn't really like it that much, and we flipped on a couple of them. Exotic gems are a good example. Yeah, I see people do really well with the exotic gem. I'm just not one of them. Yeah, and I like that ball again. It was a ball I was surprised by that. Uh, that's looked pretty good, and uh, you know, it's you find guy that that. That kind of matches up with how you see them, and and uh, you know, hopefully it's one of the two of us because we do see while we see the lane very similarly. How we get to that spot, we have our own our own approaches to for sure. So just a reminder, we've got uh, super chats and super stickers open. We're doing a drawing for all the people who uh, uh, put in a super chat question or a uh, or a sticker, um, and uh, yeah, so. Um, any questions about the DNA? Let's, uh, I think we're going to address a lot of this probably more on Thursday, but made the decision to bowl the LC, the LBC tournament, national tournament. Pretty excited for the opportunity. They, they did reveal their pattern and a nice change of pace from, uh, from what USBC does and, uh, a little bit of, uh, transparency on how the whole thing's going to happen. But, uh, uh, we'll, we will address that more on Thursday, perhaps even a giveaway. And uh, hey, Derek, right. you forgot to put your question in. Yep, fire in, boss. Yeah, get your uh, question in. Um, what was the ball you gentlemen used the most during the swing, other than your spare ball? Um, good question. There was a um, really wide variance. So the U.S. Open is really hard. Short pattern, which was prime. You're a thing for a lot of the field. And then you had two really slick patterns. Long, long patterns and slick centers, I guess, on slick surfaces. So um this is th th this is kind of what we're getting to. It doesn't necessarily. Um, because like for me, I can see it that that it could be stronger because I think it really is early. Um and the one time that I really did see a difference was well, on practice day in Wichita, the lanes were slick, like <laughs> way slicker than they were when we bowled the tournament. Right. Like they'd have the PTQ on top and I'm kind of not necessarily a conspiracy theorist, but I don't know that it always gets ripped off all of the oil when it's so quickly after it. And wow, they played slick. I mean, I was just like, yeah. holy shit, are we going to be able to hook anything in the practice? It was unbelievable. 
Yeah. I got two off the right. I posted the picture of it. One, I posted the wrong picture. I didn't post the caption either. So, you know, hey. I posted it as a video. <sighs> yep. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> that's when I know is the DNA being really strong because the DNA would shake down the lane and none mm. of my other balls would shake down the lane. Yeah. So that was the one time that I've seen it, like, be strong. And it might like, be that it's just a little bit more of a medium response cover that is super strong. And so I don't, like, maybe I don't see it hook as much in the front as I do some of the quicker big covers. Like, any X is, it's giant cover, but it is still quick. And so it'll see friction in the front. Uh, and, and so that's very possible that that's what we're seeing so far. It'll um, tell the tale when we go up to some of these older cent centers up in the in the north, uh, northeast, I guess, central, wherever, Jackson, okay. Fairlawn, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, Derek's asking a qu his question. Okay. Seems like on tour there are pros who say the heads are burning up very quickly. Is that just dependent on the lane surface? Yes. If so, how do you see this and what is it so the ball burning up in the front is the hardest thing in bowling uh -huh. by far uh, it's even harder than spending the three six nine ten which i think is overrated how difficult it is um but anyway it's certainly harder to spare the three six nine ten with 15 pound balls than 16 pound balls just saying um <laughs> it depends on a lot of things which oil we're using and it depends which center we're at. So like in Shawnee, the fronts didn't really burn up at all. Um, like you, you made a little bit of a move left, but like really it didn't, the pattern didn't change like massively there. Now in Wichita, holy shit, the lanes changed really fast in Wichita. Um, and it was very obvious because um, if you look at the scores for the field, I was in 13th after qualifying, and I would say that I was probably the only person in the top 15, say, who had better scores the last three than the first three. Yeah. And that's why I knew I was in trouble when we went to one per lane. Mm -hmm. Now, I wouldn't have been in any trouble whatsoever if we hadn't reeled the lanes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but once they reeled the lanes, I kind of had to take a swing for the fences, and I missed spectacularly. Yeah. But yeah. I wasn't going to make it like bowling on that um, So A couple other things happened. Like, say, Wichita and Shawnee are relatively new services. Now, Wichita has – it's a high traffic center still. So even though the surface is relatively new, there is a lot of play and a lot of play in the track because of the house shot. And so the fronts do pick up. Oils also come into play. Uh, ironically, for Wichita, it was one of the slicker oils that did still seem to, to beat up I don't know what would have happened if we'd have bowled on one of the slower ones that really makes it feel like they hook a lot in the front. Um, there also wasn't very much oil on the lane last week. Yeah, it was just long. It wasn't necessarily a high volume. Um, I mean, I couldn't believe how slick it played for how little there was on the lane either. Yeah. Um, now, but, on the front yeah. thing, how, how much did it say for the on the – because you had like 20% is what they say. What? It was 24.9. Yeah, so you're at another four or so, so but it, it's still relatively low for today, I think, 28 or so, uh, 28, 29. Um, how, do you, how do you manage that? You can manage it through loft. You can get, manage it through rotation. Uh, or if, And then the biggest advantage of all is if you have a high enough rev rate, you just manage it with speed <laughs> if you can get it to hook behind it. Now, like Stu said, as tight as they played down lane, that tool got kind of taken away. You couldn't just throw it hard and throw it through the front and still get it to hook down lane. And so uh, that's where, you know, I felt like I got uh, I got, I got a, a better chance to play last week. I'm, I'm just leaving this up there because um, uh, Cooley's on the other team. Yeah, yeah. Cooley bowls really good when the, when the ball, this is when a, the oil this, slows this is, his ball down. This isn't the pod, the podcast for Sal. Absolute control is the only oil we should ever use. Yeah. Um, you make the ball slow down by yourself and not not uh, not the oil do it for you. And the lanes just don't get blown to bits. Um, now, to be fair, yeah. Sam's, Sam's still set comes. 
well, Australia. No, I mean, it will be super I'm, long formats, and they hook a lot. And he's developed a skill set to be able to get it down the lane and make gigantic balls hook miles. But shout out, he made it in Shawnee, mm -hmm. which he did. was the slickest soil on the slickest lane surface. Yeah. So he kind of conquered his um, it, uh, yeah. issue. The year uh, before, that was his demon. We went from the slow oil a lot of the year. He bowled great on it. Went to the slicker oil. It took him a while to make some adjustments, and he's and he's making that transition. And, uh, you know, that's how you get to be a, a top player, for sure. Um. Uh, let's see. Hey, Sir Biscuit. Nice to see you again. Uh, a new up-and-coming bowling topics channel called The Right Lane. Yeah, I've seen it a little bit. Um, touched on the Weber Cups one year hiatus in is the event set to return or has it been shelved? We have no idea. And a lot of the things that he brought up in that video um, were perfectly reasonable assumptions. Um, I don't know. I, I That video was actually to some extent on point. Um, his video that Riggles highlighted was <laughs> just nonsense. Yeah. Um, it was it was like um yeah yeah cool right. blind squirrel finds the occasional nut. Uh, yeah um you've been in the top 10 on tour that is not how it works so. jack and tom thanks appreciate your uh, you, you reaching out if you've got a question slap it in the chat um ugh, sorry there we go uh, what was the question you were going to uh, Do you have a personal ball and layout for short patterns uh, on reactives? I can never quite decide. Oh, sorry. Decide if longer or shorter pins are better. Uh, I think generally shorter pins are better. Now, whether you – like some guys like two-inch pins. I like to use really big covers and, and lower RG, you know, bigger cores with – lower weaker pins uh you know five and a halfs that are low with, and use the surface to get the ball to pick up but don't let the ball flare so much and that creates some length two inch pins kind of bring it up close and then really control the shape in the back uh if you're a guy with a lot of rotation or girl uh two inch pins probably work a little better uh if you're able to control your roll and and uh can make it go forward on your own, then those weaker pins probably work a little better, in my opinion. Stu may have a different take on that. Yeah, I, I like the uh, – I don't like two-inch pins on short patterns anymore. Um, I think the short patterns have too much oil on them for two-inch pins now, so the pattern stretches too much, and then you can't use that ball almost at all. They won't um, walk up the – Well, yeah, you just get to the point where you miss left, and it goes – dead straight and you get it right and it comes off it like someone kicked it because yeah. the difference between the amount of oil is just <laughs> stupid um i like asymmetrical balls on short patterns because i like being able to get the ball to tumble down the lane and the big core uh gets into its forward much easier so um that's i i did i didn't mind pin down balls when i could use balance holes on the short patterns I don't really have any use for them now because I'd use a symmetrical ball pin down like a Marvel was one of the balls that I used, the original Marvel. I did pretty well with that. Uh, the modern Marvel wasn't bad either for me on those sort of cheetah type patterns. Um, now, though, uh, with as much urethane that goes down the lane, uh, the infinite infinite physics and stuff, once you can like kind of separate you where you lay it down to getting it to the right, kind of works out pretty good after that. So I think that is the big change. It used to be symmetrical balls pretty much exclusively for me on those things. And Stu kind of brought me around to the idea. And then that combined with the urethane carry down in that spot, the asymmetrical balls do pick up way better in that that left puddle that the urethane creates. And so we'll use way more of those than balls like Axiom or uh, you know, even phase twos and things like that was used to be kind of the go-tos so um uh for me the dna is way slower um and f way earlier than the reality check for me the reality check is pretty clean and it's pr it bangs off it pretty good um 
interestingly, the reality check and the infinite physics are actually becoming the new phase two and idle combo. The balls aren't <laughs> massively different, but neither of them seems to work the same week as the other one does. Yeah. Um, so yeah. uh, Shawnee, 100% infinite physics, drilled a reality check. It was awful. <laughs> like uncontrollable, just awful. Um, left it in the car, went to Wichita. Infinite physics was really shitty last week for virtually everybody. Um, yeah, I did too. I, I tried one at some point. And I'm like, you know what? This has got to be better. And they were just so tight down lane. And it just, it just wasn't. Yeah. Like, I, I don't really know what to tell you. It just, it just wasn't. So um, moving forwards, uh, I was like, well, screw it. Let's get the reality check out. And I threw it and I was just like, oh, okay. I see your reality check. And then the reality <laughs> check was awesome. So like, it, it's just so like week to week dependent. But those two balls are the new idle phase two, because that was the thing we always used to joke about with the idle and the phase two. They were both yeah. pretty similar and it was very hard to actually determine which one did what, but they never seemed to work in the same bowling center at the, the same week. It was one or the other. Um, do you want to take that one? Does, what does it mean to have soft hands? Well, I think it means different things for different people, but uh, for me, it's really about grip pressure. Uh, and when I'm talking about a soft hand, I'm uh, instead of being in the 80% range, if, if I'm really trying to make it start early, you know, you can almost max out that grip pressure and kind of grab it and make it pick up early. On soft hand, I'm thinking more about picture uh, Prather, where you kind of your hand is slow and long and the ball floats and floats and floats. And uh, that's that's really how why well, I think most people refer to as soft hands. And I think that's probably the he's probably the best of it of anybody right now of really getting his hand kind of slow and and really I would say grip pressure wise pretty soft and to create that long float before it hooks sideways. So any tips on staying behind the ball longer and don't get on the side of it when coming out of it uh, also is the only way to get better to bowl on sport. So to answer the last question, no, that isn't the only way to get better. Practice is the only way to get better. Um, and repetition, but understand that you've got to be repeating the right things because practice ingrains habits it doesn't necessarily <clears throat> automatically make you better so if you have bad habits and you practice more you just get worse i know that sounds a little screwed up but just repeating the same bad habits just ingrains them more practice is about muscle memory um in terms of staying behind the ball a little longer yes that is a big key for everybody yes almost everybody except ej tackett would like to stay behind it for a little longer because <laughs> He has his hand in the greatest spot of all time. It, it, he's, he's got it going pretty good. But right basically, um, things that cause you to get on the side of it um, is having a little bit of late time and pulling down from the top. Because really, the only way you can pull down from the top is kind of initiated somewhat by your elbow. And when you pull it down, your elbow goes out. And then your hand goes on the side of the ball and there isn't really any way of getting out of that. So having it late and trying to pull your hand to, to catch up is always going to get you on the side of the ball. So that's one thing that I think is the biggest issue for most people. And then the other thing is, is you just got to like, for me, I find that it depends what your role is like at the minute. Because if you're really end over end, then there are certain things that you're going to do differently to if you get like, if you're around it and spin it, if that kind of makes sense. So like, think about, think about not spinning it, but think about how Chris is around it. And then think about how Francois Lavoie is around it. Chris is around it. It's completely different to Frankie's around it. And if you look at their tracks, it's completely different. So the things that Chris has to focus on to stay more behind it, that Frankie has to stay more behind it, aren't going to be the same. Yeah. Um, my my take, and it goes along with what Stu's saying with the elbow, is I think a lot of things are keyed by that shoulder. This shoulder rolls forward, then that elbow comes out 
behind it. If this shoulder's forward, it's almost impossible to keep your elbow back in. And so, like Stu says, if you're pulling down from the top and you're pulling from here, your hand is automatically going to be on the outside of the ball. If you get forward, you can stay behind it, but it's really hard. And so being a little taller, keeping the shoulder back around your right ear will help you keep your elbow in, keep your forearm going through your target, and uh, will help you stay behind it more. And then from what Chris is saying, like, almost feel like your hips are sitting down a little bit is a good way of keeping your shoulders backwards. It's something I battle a lot. So I, I feel your pain. Um, try thinking about um, your ring finger as well. Thinking about the ring finger being the one that controls it. Because if you get your hand on the side of it, it's only really these two fingers that are controlling how you're throwing it. If you Shout if out you, to John Jody. See a ring finger guy? 100%. Love yeah, me with the ring finger. With the ring finger. Uh, it's all about the ring finger. Spares, ring finger to the target. <laughs> um, all right. Thanks for the question, though. I uh, appreciate the super chat. As always, you will get a more complete answer with that. Uh, the logical voice. Does the lack of PBA coverage on the big sports networks hurting, hurt bowling? It sounds like you watch that podcast and... The one thing we've had two on uh, on the bigger networks, and the general strategy this year is we're going to have more shows on Big Fox than we've had in a long time, uh, well, in a really long time, uh, and we're going to have lead-in shows at the majors. Uh, the next one being the TOC, and come I, on, I, Chris, let's make it. Let, let's make a TV show. Yeah. Like it, love it, hate it. I, I mean, I guess we don't really know yet, but it's a top 17 stepladder. So it'll be four shows over two days. Uh, so with some lead-in shows. And I think, you know, we like the idea of having a lead-in show. I do think there's some buildup and that helps. Uh, you know, would you like to have some for the Wichita Open? Yeah, we would. But keep in mind the production of TV costs more than the prize fund. So... In some cases, we're balancing out, okay, we can have a tournament with a prize fund or we can have a tournament on TV, but the prize fund may suck. <laughs> All right, so, let's, um, let's yeah. just transition a little bit away from these questions. Uh, we're going <laughs> to, um, let's pull up the, uh, the emerald, which made Chris very happy. The emerald, the ruby, ruby. 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 I keep saying it, ruby. Ruby. Different jam. Anyway. Let's pull up the IQ <laughs> Ruby, and um, this is Chris. Uh, you're back on the same lane. Did you shoot this first or second? I shot it second. I did have an idea. That... I think this is the first two frames. Uh, no. it, I think I missed the yeah. one. Or... Oh, yeah, we can just start over again. It's only I went, No, I went flat 10, flat 7. No, there's... I've started it again. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so this is frame. that was frame one. That's frame two. And then I moved a little right. Uh, this one I did uh, a little more what we normally do, where I got four or five shots in, then I moved. There we go. I moved like four or five left. They're a little slower. Uh, this one I moved. That's 10 right from the last one and got closer to it. Uh, this is five more right. And uh, I I really like it got through the front of the lane. This is back kind of original starting point. It got through the front of the lane. It read the middle no matter which speed I threw it. Uh, I think that was one where I got around it, just kind of see what it looked like with some more rotation. Again, moving back to the right. And uh, it is a house shot. And so, yeah, the lanes are are not particularly hard, but this is a place where carry isn't particularly awesome either. And so uh, I've thrown this ball here twice, both times been, uh, been very happy with uh, how much it's come off the end of the pattern, a place where I had struggled to get it to come off the end. Uh, again, there was some rotation on that one, but uh, this ball is, what do you say when, you know, when this- It's a banger. It's a banger. That's right. Uh. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's interesting because 
Um, <laughs> I hate these small core balls on the house shot, and you actually quite like them. Um, yeah, it lets me feel like I can roll them without them getting offline in the in the front, I guess. Yeah, um, like, I I pick up like... In the, they pick up in the mid lane good for me. Uh, that being said, I almost never throw the emerald in this place. It's it's too weak down lane most of the time. And so uh, uh, in the back end of this video, there is uh, uh, no, no, I'm not saying that, Alan. I mean, the congratulations. Right. This is a this is a very soft flex for Alan. He shot his first 700 of the year. He shot 740 last night. And uh, he would like us to mention him as a longtime uh, Beef and Barnsey uh, listener. So, all right. So, just a reminder: we still got the drawer open. So, don't be afraid. Super chats, super stickers of all of the season of the season, not the year. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So anyway, I did my uh, review a little bit differently. Uh, yeah kind of corny but it's kind of right yeah um i did my review for this one a little differently i had like four patterns laid out one of which was house which may or may not have been the one that this ball looked the worst on but anyway. <laughs> um so this is uh yeah let me just start over. so this uh lane 16 is 44 feet so what's that that's uh hardwick yeah uh lane 15 is the toc don johnson uh, 14 is the house shot and 13 is chameleon. So um, I drilled this a little stronger than I did my first one. Um, I did There's so much more oil where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have to throw this ball. Well, this is 44 <laughs> feet as well. Though. Right. right. Um, True. So I did the review for this one because I managed to screw my microphone up with the first review. But you see, I got that one right. She ain't coming back because it's 44 feet. Right. Um, like I say, uh, the first one I drilled with the five and a half inch pin. And to be honest, that ball for me um, is going to need a lot of friction. Um, yeah. Because it's 029 diff. I mean, that's about as so, low as any ball in the market right now that's not urethane. Yeah. So I drilled this one with a four and three quarter inch pin and about a three inch buffer. This is the TOC pattern. This is definitely the one that it looked the second worst on just because there's so much oil on this pattern in comparison to the other patterns. It this flies is, up the lane on this. This one. is 40? This is 41, I believe. Oh, okay. 40. No, it might be 40. But it, it, it's like, yeah. And it's so tight. The version yeah, has got up a very old surface at uh at at Fairlawn. Yeah. But like yeah. I say, and then this is Camille, and this is by far what it looked best on, which makes sense. It's kind of a medium pattern, 39 feet. Um like I say, four four and three quarter inch pin. Um, like I say, it's uh, for for me, it's going to be an interesting. Uh, uh, like actually, for me, I had it a little smoother than the emerald. Um, I think it's a little stronger. Yeah. I think I have it a couple of feet sooner. Uh, we'll get the video up on the channel pretty soon, where you can hear the voice over the whole way through. Uh, yeah, this is the house shot against it. So, you what? This is the house shot now. Yeah. Um, like I say, you got to be a little, little slow with the house shot here. Um, I'd used the DNA on this before, but like I say, you see, you can kind of, you can kind of see it's the house shot. Um, it's definitely not smooth. Um, we're just bowling on a lot more oil. Um, yeah, your yeah. place is. It, your house shot took a little getting used to. It, it was a little different than the house shot that I that I have. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not as defined, but the scores are pretty high on it. Um, nevertheless, um, so let me just uh, I'll get to this super chat in just one second. Um, for me, I see this ball as being uh, the strongest of the three main IQ Tour pearl balls: the gold, the, the emerald, and the ruby. Um, in terms of which one hooks the most down the lane, I think that the emerald is the most angular. The gold is the smoothest. I think the ruby is right in between. Um, it might be even a little cleaner than the gold one, but overall hook, I think that this red one, the ruby, is the strongest of the three in terms of just overall boards covered. 
Um, where it's going to fit for me? Well, once I drilled this stronger pin, um, yeah, just to say. Yeah, but nobody really cared about that one. It just that was that, super long. That was the longest of all of them. <laughs> um, but anyway, just quickly getting back to it. Uh, for me, I, I was looking for a ball that because I kind of go fate then night road, and the revenant's going to fit in there somewhere. Um, at some point, I just haven't really had much chance to use it because I've wanted to use that stronger cover, that stronger Rex cover. But um, an R2S ball is going to end up having to fit in there to give me just just something a little different. And I see this being, um, yeah, I see this fitting in below the fate, kind of before the night road with it being lower RG. So I drilled it a little stronger to make it flare a little more to kind of make up that gap. Uh, because for me, the 029 diff is kind of a little, it's a little rough. Um, <laughs> like with the way I throw it and the way it, it just doesn't, this four and three quarter inch pin is definitely the best that I've had one of these balls look for a while. Um, so I'm excited to see, um, I'm excited to see what it looks like when I get it out on tour and I'm playing across different people's transitions and see what it's like. Because that's the main thing um, of why Rex cover, the REX covers look so good for me, is because when I move across the house, I'm not noticing like holy shit differences between the lanes. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's only a couple of boards here or there. It's not like you're on like a 15 bagger going into the game and then you throw it and it's like, oh my God, I washed out. And... To me, that's the key to finding good balls, like ones that get pretty close, like, you know, your four pin or your flat 10 or something when you're changing rather than like, you know, 210, washout, whatever. That's the difference. Um, okay, Ryan, what's up? Uh, what's the difference between a strong sim and a pearl hybrid asim? Uh, which one is usually better for blending out wet dry? Um, when you're saying a strong symmetrical, do you mean like a like a solid ball? Um, I mean, what's the difference between a strong symmetrical and a pearl asymmetrical? Well, to me, pearl asymmetrical or pearl hybrid or, or hybrid asymmetrical balls are usually pretty fast response and they have a short transition window. Um, yeah, a strong solid like the idle. Well, a strong solid ball like the idle is going to have a longer uh transition window, so. When it starts hooking, it'll be much more rounded. The pearl asymmetrical balls are going to have going to be really fast in one spot. So, um, kind of like if you're bowling on something like a house shot, um, the pearl asym, the hybrid balls, they're going to be like super hit or miss. Like when you get it right and you get it far down the lane and they start coming off it, you, you can put up some really big scores. But if you but if you start using it and the, and, and the shot has really, um, it's really become more wet, dry, more transitioned, then you might find yourself in quite a bit of trouble. Um, on, on it, it, it really depends which place you're bowling at. I've had success with both. If I was going to say which one is usually better for me, um, usually better for me with my skill set is the is the asymmetrical ball. The pearl asim is usually better on house shots for me than, say, phase two or idle. Yeah, but, it, kind of, it kind of depends on how much friction there is in the front of the lane because you can use that idle like you're talking about and those kind of things when there's when the front's pretty good and use that more surface. But when when you don't, you need a ball to get through the front first. It's where the asim I think gives you the ability if you combine that with some drilling to blend out that wet dry. You're Especially great you're using the A sims on the wet dry. You what? Especially if you're a little smoother with your hand. Yeah. Um, what difference in ball reaction on lane play would you know between short pin layouts or short pin buffer layouts with a stronger pin? Uh, that's a quite an interesting question. Um, so right. for me, um, it, typically when I do a short pin, you're going to have a short pin buffer because obviously the axis point is on the valve. So you can't really have you can't have a longer pin buffer than you have pin. So if you've got a four inch pin, the longest pin buffer you could possibly have is four inches because that because your axis is on your valve. 
if that kind of makes sense. So if you're talking about kind of like higher pin balls um, and being up on the valve and like a five inch pin on the valve um, is going to be super quick, but then very forward. Whereas yeah. a short pin, say a one inch pin, um, pin to pap is going to be um, way smoother. Like it, it's going to take a really long time to con- finish its hook phase. Um, and that's what makes them useful on the short on, on uh, for control in the pocket. Now, on a short pattern, for example, both of these layouts can work well. It just depends on how you want to attack them. Like for me, I kind of like that sh- that five inch pin, one inch buffer to throw at the gutter, get it to stand up and then be forward. I like that reaction. I don't particularly like using the short pin and being close to it because I just see the front break up more. Chris, on the other hand, likes standing more on top of the pattern on the short pattern, just in general. Like, if we were going with what we would feel most comfortable about, we would both end up migrating to whichever was easiest. But assuming that we're in a world where it doesn't matter, like, it's like... You can do what you want, I can do what I want. Yeah. Like, and you can play left or you can play right. You're probably going to see Chris playing further right, closer to the friction, using more speed. And I'm going to be further away from it. In those cases... Chris would probably be using the shorter pin to stand on top of it because he wants that longer, not really responsive motion. Right. I'm going to be more in the oil, throwing it to the dry. I'm going to want the shorter pin buffer, uh, longer pin, because it's going to get to the dry, stand up and go forwards. And that's how I'm going to control the pattern. So it, it's two different ways to get to a, a, a reaction, but both of those things are going to be really different in the bag think about it as like how long that hook window is on the short pin short buffer it's going to be way longer if you go with longer pin shorter buffer it's going to be way quicker way shorter hook window so thanks for the question that was an interesting one um spoiler alert i would have answered that question without a super chat because that was actually really good Uh, I've been out of the game a long time, recently got in, struggle with layouts and terminology. When you refer to pin, you're making reference to your pin to your physical PAP, correct? Yes. Yes. So uh, four, four and a half inch pin for most people is right above their ring finger. And so that's kind of a uh, a general. But uh, uh, Brian, just let me shout think- out. Just let me shout out a oh. long time listener. Yes. First time super chat. Really appreciate you, Adam. Thanks a lot. You're the man. Um, keep watching. Thanks for the support in the channel. You're, you're a good dude. Right. So where were we at? Bill O'Neill. Uh, do you guys think Bill O'Neill is willing okay with 14 pounds so far on tour? Yeah. Seems yeah. to be. Doherty's actually seems to do better, actually. Um, he's been a little more consistent with it. Yeah. Doherty's had some, some wrist issues, and so he he's giving it a go. Uh, I bowled with Bill O'Neill this week. I qualified third. Didn't seem to struggle a lot there. Uh, it, it was interesting seeing it close up, so you kind of get to watch the carry. And there's every once in a while you get hits that you think are normal, where he leaves, you know, a half pocket, seven or ten. You went, hmm, might have been able to get that one out with 15 or 16. Um, yeah, I, I think you're always going to feel that. Yeah. I, I'm never going to do it. Yeah. It was the reason why I resisted for so long, because I didn't want it in my head. But I did watch him get a lot of shaker hits and some other things that I, I didn't feel like he – it's way closer than I would have anticipated. That's, that was my take. Now it was easy because he struck a lot. I do think, and maybe I'm full of it, but I think that it might have bit Doherty in the ass this weekend because he went and bowled the Bradley, and that's not an event I'd want to not throw it. Like, if I'd have gone and bowled the Bradley, I would have taken two 16-pound balls off the truck because we've got a million of them. Yeah. And I'd have just bowled with 16 because I bowled with 16 at the uh, Snowman for a lot of it. Yeah, um, I, I would have thought where it showed up is on the longer patterns. And Bill did not make the finals in Shawnee. Uh, I don't think Liv Doherty did either. But then this week, they both made the top 12. So, 
Uh, if it was going to really bite them, I would think the longer patterns would do it. And, you know, maybe it cost Bill making a show, maybe not. I, I mean, there's no way, real way to know, but it well, didn't stop him from like, going well. He, he might not have got up there if he'd have been bowling the whole time with 50. True. Right. Um, one thing, shout out to the Bradley. Really like the event. Would like it if lefties didn't win it so often, but shout out. I like the challenge. I think it's cool. You have the world's stupidest rule ever in existence. Please change it. It was complete bullshit what happened to Troop. Now, I will say that you made the announcement, but it was so stupid that nobody would listen to it. So, sorry. Well, Troop now bowled. you have to explain. I don't know what that was. So, they bowled a cashers round in the morning. Yeah. They cut to the top eight. You could surface your balls before that round. But then after that, you couldn't surface them for the next set of matches. What? Like, why? Like, it's a different round. You literally call it the round of eight, the round of four, the final. Like, by definition, you've given them a different fucking name. Like, it's just stupid. So poor Troop bowls his first round match, wins, does what... Every normal person would do at that point. Now, I do want to make the point they did announce it. Whatever. Surfaced his ball. The two balls he'd used the whole week. No, you can't use those now. Oh, and by the way, you can't add surface to any of the other balls you've got because we've said you can't change services. So now he has to bowl the round of four against Cody Shoemaker with no surface. <laughs> Now he manages to Houdini his way through that match. Now he's playing Graham Farr in the final with no surface again, bowling against the lefty. Which is the cheat code for the Bradley. So Yeah. So <laughs> love the tournament. Jason, you do a great job. You like you get a bunch of players in. It's a cool idea. Just change that because that's just dumb. Like just dumb, dumb. And if you're not going to change it, just let just say that you can't change services at all. Like, yeah. why can you change it before the round of eight, but not before the round of four? Yeah. No sense. Anyway, sorry. Tangent. Let's get back to Super Chats. Ryan, appreciate you again. I see people using weaker layouts and using service to make the ball hook nowadays. Does that allow them to make the ball more even with softer hands? No. What it, what it, what it does, um, I can talk from my point of view anyway, um, if you use a strong, if you use a stronger pin with no service, the ball doesn't pick up as soon. Um, so then it kind of becomes more uneven by using more surface. You're getting the ball to pick up early, like you're saying, but if you use a strong pin and strong surface, the ball loses a lot of energy and rolls out or just doesn't really hook down the lane. So what a lot of the pros do, because they have almost every pro has higher rev rates than a atypical league bowler. Um, they use a weaker pin, but more surface because we're also balling on more oil. So the ball will pick up, but because the it, it, it doesn't flare as much, it'll still continue. So that's kind of the reason behind it. Is that a fair enough exact, uh, explanation, Chris, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I, I know I use it myself. Uh, I use the weaker layout so I so that it doesn't, it doesn't force me to go as far left to right through the front. And then that lets me stay a little bit straighter and then use the surface so I can get it to pick up in that mid lane and get going uphill. I don't want it to go too long. So a lot of the same things you're saying, it, it just basically a perception of how I see the lane. Uh, thanks again, Mr. Wynn <laughs> for the super sticker. Uh, Adam coming in hot. Does it make sense to get the gem and not the DNA? I believe so. So far, I think we've got more data to support the gem. I'm all, I'm a data guy. Um, yeah. Uh, you're buying the products. I think it makes the most sense for you to buy the most proven products. Um, and I think right now, the um, I, I, I think that the gem is more proven. So if I was buying a ball today, it would be the gem. That's not to say that the DNA isn't good. There's just the gem has been so, so popular for so long then I think yeah. it only makes sense to go with the gem. That's my shot. That's my thoughts on it. True. Um, 
both guys in the Southwest lap. The interesting, yeah, we were just talking about this. So yes. St. Peter's led by quite a bit. They did the Eliminator format, which was 8-6-6. Six, six. I think the seniors was 8-6-4. Um, the step ladders were both won by guys. I think it was the four seed on both uh, ran the ladder. So interesting. <laughs> um, it sucks, but you knew what the format was before you started. Yeah. Um, you're talking to the guy right here who's been the the negative recipient of that more than most. So <laughs> I don't think Chris is crying many people a river for losing fifteen hundred or a thousand bucks. Yeah, the masters three times. Multiple thousands of bucks. Um in yeah, we're in the we're, um, we're in the six six figures. <laughs> As a full roller, does the VLS system still apply? Typically, the only adjustment I can make is our service. I really apologize. If I could refund a Super Chat, this would be one I'd refund because I've got no idea. Um, I don't know anything except the two full roller layouts. Yeah. It's Off the top, really I mean, we can we can do a little digging on this, but uh, my – I mean – I guess we could ask Frankie like four weeks ago if it still mattered. Um, but I think he's off the full roller system now. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I believe it's still the same two layouts that I've always heard. I have not heard anything different come about uh, since VLS. So I, I almost think that Craig's right. doing this on purpose. You what? I almost think that Craig's doing this on purpose. Don't agree, Stu. You have to pay attention to the rules. Seven of the eight people didn't make the mistake. Did you listen to a word I said? Like, seriously. I emphasize that they made the announcement. That doesn't make it right. Yeah. I'm not saying that Kyle didn't make a mistake. I'm saying that going forward, they shouldn't do that. I'm not even saying that they should have let Kyle get away with it. They no. did the right thing because that was the rule. That just shouldn't be the rule. Yeah. Like, why? What? What's the positive of it when you're bowling? Because this is the same tournament that, like, a few years ago, you could change services, and they wondered why the lefties won because they didn't. They 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 bowled on all the burnt lanes. Now they've actually changed it, and they've made a great change. They went to fresh lanes for all the finals. Awesome. That's superb. That's so exactly fair. what we want for a match. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. Okay. So have you ever drilled lighter, heavier balls than normal? Because after the difference in core dynamics. Uh, yeah. High road pearls are like that. For me, the uh, the badgers and the fluxes were both the same thing when they didn't use inners for a little while. So 15 to 16 changed the dynamics. Well, I think it used to happen more when you had one – when Players were with one brand only, and so you stayed inside of that. Now that almost everybody has multiple brands to choose from, there's less of that that happens now. Hey, Adrian. Adrian. Thanks a lot. He said, whoops, forgot my comment. Just supporting you guys. Thanks, Adrian. Really appreciate you. Um, the Amateur Fury. Oh, furry. Sorry, Furry. Uh, I used an AMF angle in practice and tournaments. What would you say has more effect, ball or oil pattern or both? Uh, also getting a storm too. Um, the answer to this is quite clearly the oil pattern. There's if a bunch of guys. You can use a ball from 1984 or five and strike now. So... <laughs> But all I mean is, is like, there's a bunch of guys who want to blame the balls for everything. The lane conditions has always and will always be the ultimate determining factor. Like, it, it, yeah. Like, everybody's like, oh, the, the balls are so this or so that. It's just like, it's just such bullshit. Like, the lane conditions create scoring. We bowl the US Open. The scores are low. Didn't matter which balls you had. It's just yeah. Now the balls changed a little bit of what the average score is on a given condition, but uh, yeah. It, but the it, thing is, is, it takes it takes both. But yeah, lane conditions can't overrule everything. 
if you want yeah. them to. Yeah. If you make them super easy, it almost doesn't matter which ball you use. Like Jasper's, Jasper does fine using like a sumo or whatever bullshit, like <laughs> RC5 or like I've seen Jasper use a rubber ball at average 260. So, I mean, I'm not pretty sure he isn't doing that. Stu is on a roll today. Yeah, people just piss me off this weekend. It's just like, come on. <laughs> just like, come on. Come on, people. Just make rules that make sense. Uh, Question for the response. Even in defeat, how did it feel to be back at North Rock? Adam, well, you're firing phrase, in today. When phrased like that. No, uh, I, I love North Rock lanes. That's where I learned how to bowl. Uh, I was an okay high school bowler at best. Went to college at Wichita. North Rock was my my home base. And uh, I got to see a lot of people. We've, we've moved from Wichita about 20 years ago, but uh, it was great to be back around family and friends. It was close enough. My mom was able to drive over and, and watch. My niece uh, lives in Wichita now, so she came out as well. Uh, lots of lifelong friends, uh, you know, there to uh, – to support and early in my career, uh, I think it was it was a lot of pressure to come back and bowl at North Rock because I felt like there's a lot of expectations. Now it's just kind of it's a uh, it's a reunion tour. You get to come back and and bowl someplace. It was nice having my kid there too. Uh, he bowls in that place probably more than anyone right now. So I had pretty good lane crosses. I uh, knew what the pairs did uh, lane to lane uh, probably as well as anybody in the building. So uh, I love being back there. So it's one of my favorite places anywhere. Even um, I throw scouts at, in North Rock. So, <laughs> Okay, Jack and Tom, shout out. Uh, wow. Morning, guys. My new release has allowed me to clear the fronts a bit better like Chris has done. Would the newer, stronger cover uh, core covers like DNA help me get it further down the lane? My gem still burns up on the fresh in league. Um, from my suggestions from what you're saying i feel like if you're experiencing the gem burning up what other balls do you have because for me um immediately if you want a strong ball infinite physics is coming to mind i think that ball's fantastic in a league setting where there's a little bit less oil um but that's that's just my take on it i i i would wait and see uh, with the DNA where it actually shakes out. Um, there's def um, It's due out, I think, Mar March 17. Seems to ring a bell. Somewhere in that range. It's a Friday in March. Yeah. Uh, I know that doesn't really help. but um, <laughs> I can look it up real yeah, quick. Yeah, it is March 17. There so um, I would wait and see a few more people throw it. Um, but for me, the most tried and trusted products at the minute um, our gem, reality, infinite physics, Zen, phase two, uh, fate, night road. Um, all of those balls seem to be uh, good for multiple players. And between me, Chris, Tina, Ryan, we have quite a lot of styles um, covered. And I think that those balls for most of us have been pretty good. Uh, the night road is probably the one that is the most um, on the shell, like on, on the on, on the fence about uh, the other ones. I think we're pretty pretty clear that we like overall, wouldn't you say, Chris? Yeah, I would say it's close. I, I would, uh, even though it's early, I'd say the the ruby is in that is is an early uh, addition, at least so far. Uh, yeah, I, I like the look of it, but like I say, it's yeah, it's a little. Hard. But your list there, that's pretty complete of the balls that we go, yeah, universally. Uh, you and I both like pretty much that whole group. So, I mean, I don't like the term must haves because I don't think anybody must have anything. Yeah. Uh, I, but don't say that to my wife when I'm buying electronics. <laughs> But um, but yeah, um, I, I it really depends on what other balls you've got. If you want to just pop in the chat and tell me what would be your balls down from that, then maybe we could give you a better, more complete idea. But the gem, um, if that's burning up on the fresh, I would you know unless you're really struggling with 
something like an infinite physics or a reality check actually yeah. picking up, then I would take a bigger leap down, like Stu said. I would go to infinite physics. If that still feels like it's too much, then you have, uh, you know, fate. Uh, you have. Well, another option could be phase two. And phase two, um, yeah. Like exactly. go to the symmetrical. Oh, here we go. Um, I have Exotic Gem, Absolute, and Cosmos uh, that have had some good success. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think that the um, then another option could be the reality, um, especially if you took the surface just a little up a little bit um, to fit in between your gem and your exotic. And up meaning smoother. Yes. So um, try and separate. Like I personally see the reality is more down lane than the gem. Uh, the Barnes family does not. Uh, on this uh, one, yeah, we were ahead. just talking about this. I, I, the reality is more down lane. The gem is quicker, but it's also quicker in the front. Okay, sometimes, and so it it's a little quicker and a little stoppier for me. But the reality is the shape that love because it mm -hmm. continues for a long time. And so if it sees some extra friction, you know, guys with Stu's skill set, uh, they can do a million different things. I mean, we, he can get it to shape off that and make it shape as much as he wants. It's, it's I was about great. to say, can do a million different things except make the gem continue down lane. Well, <laughs> yeah, man. That, uh, well, there's that. Oh, so. shit. Um, no, um, I don't really have any need to. And it also, there's always somebody watching. So, um, yeah, but, um, for any of you guys out there in the chat, um, the, uh, the new black widow 2.0 hybrid looks like a pretty good ball. So just, there you go. just throw it out there. That one's, that one's been by far the most popular on the Brunswick side. We're getting uh, down like, towards the end. We'll answer a few more. How's the bowling community this past week in Wichita compared to some of the others? Um, uh, you know, Wichita's in my mind over history, Wichita is about one of the largest sized towns for us to really where the PBA lives and breathes. Uh, it's 400,000 people. You have, you have Wichita state there, but you don't have a lot of major college uh, events to compete with a, a big bowling community. And they, and they're all, they're all wired together. You know, they, they don't have to do advertising when the tour comes to town. They all know the tours in town uh, because the town's connected that way. Uh, when you get to big towns, you know, you can be in Dallas and, and bull in several sections of town and the other side has no idea you were in town and mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're competing with the Mavericks and the stars and the Cowboys and everything else. And so uh, uh, places like Erie, Medford, Wichita have always done very well on tour over, over the years. Yeah. I would describe it as not necessarily the biggest, but the most knowledgeable, like, I think the fan base that was there this week or the spectators um, had way more knowledge and understanding of the intricacies that were going on than the average crowd. Um, my favorite place to go that we don't go anymore is Columbus. Um, yeah, I, very I, knowledgeable I, town. But there was, yeah. I would say it's not as knowledgeable as Wichita, but more people came out just yeah. because Wayne, Wayne did a fantastic yeah. job of getting the people in. But, um, but yeah, just... Like I say, um, yeah, yeah that, that's just been for me. Like, it's amazing. The thing that's amazing about Wichita is how many people come out. You forget live in Wichita <laughs> still. Yeah. You're like, oh, shit. I haven't seen you since, well, last time I was here. Oh, shit. You still live here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just it's just funny. That's all. You, but everybody always comes out for the tour stop. It's, it's very cool. Uh, are PBA bowlers subject to the jock tax? Yes. So when you go to Connecticut, California, we have to file taxes in all those states where, you know, no no stone left unturned. If they can make a money grab, they grab it. Uh, but we don't have to worry about that because we've not been to one of those states in forever. You what? No, we don't. We bowl mostly Republican states now. Um, bowlers pay their own entry fees or covered? No, we pay our own entry fees. Uh um, some some companies do cover some of the entry fees and stuff. I know that, but in general, no. Um, uh, yeah, we've been to Omaha before. It's uh, Omaha, 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 Omaha. Yep. Uh, so, 
Uh, yeah. Um, oh, that that sucks, Ryan. Um, life happened. I couldn't replace anything for years. Um, I, I I would think that uh, Zen and a phase two is a very good starting point for most. That's people. an excellent start for most. Yeah. Well, so, we're a minute fifteen more. in. Uh, it's Thanks. probably about that time. I will uh, flick back through this chat and collect all the people who were in the super chats, and we will have something at the start of the show uh, next week on, on Thursday. Sorry, so tune in for that. Thanks, really appreciate you guys. Um, I appreciate it. Great show, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, if you liked how we did this kind of ball review thing, and you want us to do something like that again. Uh, follow up with us and then uh, these videos up in whole will be up soon and uh, you can watch those on the beef and barnsey channel please like subscribe share and thursday we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about the lbc and a giveaway there talk about the new lane pattern and uh uh what else um, we talk? we'll talk about how we're going to get ready for jackson and the upcoming uh the upcoming swing yeah, and um, just um, real, re real, real quick, um, I will try and get the ball videos up that Chris is, Chris and I have filmed in the next couple of days. Um, definitely up before I leave for Jackson. Uh, we've got uh, I've got a multi pattern review on the Ruby. Uh, Chris has done his deal that you saw a bunch of there um, on the Ruby and the DNA, and then I've done a house shot game sort of thing um with the dna um let me know about the camera angles i i bought something for doing the camera at, at my place and i really like it i hope you guys do um the look down over the shoulder type deal i think it's kind of a cool angle so if you guys like it i'll probably think about trying to set chris up with it alone yes come on man so all right We've uh, we've exhausted the time. I've got to get back to help my father because I've got him doing lots of stuff around my house, which I always do when he comes. So, Hey, Pops. All right. Well, until Thursday, when you get a chance, please support the sponsors that support us. Storm, Roto Grip, Nine Air Global, Kuwik, Bowler's Mart, Fire Lake Bowling Center, Lightning Strikes, and Platinum Ford. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. God bless. Thanks for watching. Appreciate all the super chats. Take care.